Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Queenie, for those who don't know me, reviewing Married at First Sight, season 11, episodes 33 and 34. I guess you could say the penultimate episode. Actually, no, that's not true. 34 is not the penultimate because we have two nights of final vows. Why? I don't know. But anyways, before we get into it, please make sure to like this video, subscribe and hit the bell and leave a comment down below. I'm going to tell you ahead of time, Sunday's video is going to be late because I'm not going to be in the country. It might come out Tuesday. It might come out on Tuesday. Just bear with me. Okay. On to this episode though, at the final commitment ceremony, we have Eden who feels like she doesn't have a voice in her relationship. And the only way that she can get Jaden to stop bombarding her is if she just agrees. I don't want to have the conversations with you because I know that as soon as we share our feelings about something, we'll get into a debate that I can't get out of. When you talk about your feelings or I talk about my feelings, I don't get a word in. You do, definitely. Okay. While you may disagree with it, that doesn't mean she doesn't feel disempowered when she's around you and trying to talk. I always try and listen and really understand well, how I she feels. I think what we're saying tonight, Jaden, is that you're doing a bad job of it. Am I just going to be told I'm wrong by you guys or am I actually going to be allowed to say how I feel? I just don't want to say the wrong thing is all and then, and then you know, I think I'm, you're I'm being here. a bit childish now. So like I said in the previous video, when it comes to Eden, I do believe that she does weaponize her anxiety. Sorry, I do. I saw that a lot of you people agreed with that sentiment, which thank God for that. Cause I was starting to think like, ah, am I off base with this one? But no, it seemed like most of you guys were also feeling the same. With that being said, Jaden definitely, definitely could learn how to read the room better. And when you see somebody shutting down, this is not the time to now give them the third degree. So he needed to learn, you know, okay, sure. I want to hash things out with Eden, but is right now the best time? No, it's gonna be less effective to continue. And we were better off just waiting taking some time, maybe doing it in front of the experts, just, you know, and doing it in front of the experts was actually very helpful because we had a breakthrough when it came to Jaden. He was understanding um, there's a better way to handle Eden when she gets in this state. One thing I didn't like from the experts was they said um, the way that Jaden was handling the conflict was childish. And I'm thinking to myself, Eden does the same thing. Like, I'm sorry. Eden does the same thing. So I didn't, I personally didn't appreciate how Eden got off scot-free just because she was the one who was shutting down. It's a similar situation of, you know, when you're having a disagreement with someone and the other person starts crying, even though you know you're right, anybody who's looking in on the situation is going to automatically side with the person who's crying. That's just how we're wired as humans. Well, well most of us. So um, I wish Eden got a little bit of criticism as well, but whatever, they let her go free. It's fine. They seem to be in a better place now. We have Jade who says that she's worried about being abandoned by Ridge. She falls in love very quickly and then tends to be left in the dust. Um, Ridge assures her that he is falling for her and he's committed to this relationship. Tim and Sarah are in a great place. However, Tim says that the trust has not fully been rebuilt. I don't know if it'll ever be fully rebuilt, to be honest with you. I don't see a real future with these two, but as this experiment is concerned, it seems like they are doing great. Then we have Timothy, who, in my opinion, is still making excuses. And Lucinda has finally put a foot down and she said, listen, I was willing to walk with you through this, but I'm at my end. I think Lou is really on this journey with feelings and and that's her jam and the more that you dig into it the more i retreat and i need that space tim you just haven't really felt a chemistry with me and sometimes i've been like how about now how about now you know <laughs> how about now you know i haven't been able to get close to tim what a wild ride on this zippy marriage cart in my heart i know i did my best from the very start you're a lovable brick wall hilarious and a character of a guy but the essence of this story tim is that you never really did try that's no surprise that we're through it's a leave from me I am so glad these two decided to call it quits because 
sister. Like, I love how gracious she is. I love how nurturing she is. But at some point, you got to decide that you deserve better. And finally, when it came to Timothy, she decided that she deserved better. Clearly, they had a conversation off camera about ending things mutually. Like I said, at the beginning of the season, she's going to be his blessing. He's going to be her downfall. And they're going to end up being, at the very least, very good friends. And it seems like that's what they're going to be. Then we have Tori, um, who says that she's fallen in love with Jack. And he says the feeling is mutual. They claim that having sex has validated their relationship and that they can really see a future between each other. Honestly, whatever. If you want to be Delulu, go ahead and be Delulu, okay? Now, a relationship that might not have a future anymore is Jonathan and Lauren because Tori has a bad boy piece of information that she wants to drop. You had been texting Ellie. Ellie reached out to me and literally every three or four days she'll send a message saying there's absolutely nothing there. She's not my type. It's weird though. We got on really well during the experiment and she didn't miss reach out to me. Yeah, she's funny. Like we, I literally just update her and we have a laugh about the experiment. Do you have feelings and... for Ellie? No, I don't. Any sort? No, I don't. <laughs> stupid. Stop, you don't feel stupid. No, you do feel stupid. Oh, okay. Even before the bomb was dropped, did y'all notice how far away Lauren was leaning from Jonathan? I'm not a body linguistic expert, but um, leaning away typically isn't a good sign. So it seemed like maybe something was off even before hearing the news or she already knew the news because we know maths, come on. At this point, it's basically a scripted show. So that was interesting to me. However, let's get into the uh, situation here. Jonathan <laughs> is very sick, okay, for bringing sex back into the relationship, knowing he's entertaining a woman on the outside. He claims that it's innocent, but why didn't you bring it up then? If it was innocent, why didn't you say something? Same thing with Sarah and Tim. If you meeting up with your ex wasn't a problem, why did you lie or omit the truth? Did Jonathan actually lie point blank? Technically, you could say no, but an omission of truth can be categorized as a lie. Um, he did outright lie when he was asked who messaged who first, and he said Ellie messaged him first. And the next episode, we see that that's not true per his own admission. What a guy. Um, I just, Jonathan, listen, at the homestays, I mean, I already knew the whole Jonathan and Ellie situation, but at the home stays, to me, he just seemed disengaged. So for them to say, oh yeah, we consummate, not consummated, we had sex again. I'm just like, why? Was there alcohol involved? If there was alcohol involved, then I understand. Cause John, sometimes it'd be that liquor. <laughs> just saying. Um, also, Tori reveling in this situation is very rich if you ask me because she's like i don't appreciate people in glass houses throwing stones so i'm gonna give other people the same treatment that they've been giving me well apparently according to the people on discord you guys in the comments can confirm it's being reported that jack was staying with his ex this alleged crazy ex uh, throughout this process, they were still living together, at least on paper. So, um, hey, glass house resident, Tori, now you're throwing stones while you're in a glass house. Ain't that crazy? And apparently, again, this is just a report. I don't know. Apparently at some point, Jack and this girl had to take out restraining orders on each other, or I think he took one out on her. So at the beginning of the season when he was saying, oh no, like she's crazy, she's deranged, I guess it was, he had enough evidence to at least get a restraining order on her. But for me, when men go straight to, oh, she's crazy, I'm like, mm, I'm pretty sure you had a bigger part to play than you're willing to admit. So Tori, I'd be careful how much you are reveling in people's demise.
just saying. So in episode 34, Lauren wants to see the text from Jonathan and he surrendered the phone, no questions asked. You know, you reached out to her. I don't feel great. From what I've glanced over, there is absolutely no, like, how's Lauren? Did you mention me once? Okay, let's say no. Yeah, I think, you know, the answer's no. These were a lot of texts. Jonathan made it seem, oh, it was just a little catch up, like, oh, the dinner party was great. Oh, the commitment ceremony was hectic. Sir, there were paragraphs in here and Miss Girl was scrolling, scrolling. It just kept going and go, sir? This is more than just a little catch up. And he's like, well, I talk to everybody. What other wives do you talk to? He mentioned a lot of guys. I talked to Tristan, I talked to Steven, and I talked to Michael. Steven and Michael are gay, so they're out the picture. Tristan, what other ladies from the experiment do you catch up with? Hmm? So we're gonna fast forward to the dinner party. Jonathan is taking no accountability whatsoever. I've reached out to most people, six or seven people regularly. It's all very banter, laughing about the experiment. My name was not mentioned. If it's friends talking about the experiment, I'm the experiment with you. So you'd put that to bed, like you and Ali in the future, you don't think it'd ever be a thing, wouldn't pursue it? Yeah, 100%. This man is on a mission to make it seem like the text between him and Ellie were completely innocent, but even in his explanation, it's just not making sense. And then to add insult to injury. <laughs> I assume this happened back when Jack told um, Jonathan that he wanted a wife swap so that somebody else could sleep with his wife. Apparently in that same conversation, Jonathan said that if he were to be partnered with anybody, ah! If he were to be partnered with anybody else, he would choose Ellie. So Tori has been sitting on this information for a minute now. And when she brings it up, he's like, no, 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 I never, I, I, I never said that. I never said that. Well, what did you say? Because then when Lauren asks you point blank, did you say that? What does he say? I don't remember. We got on Jack's ass for not recalling certain things. We're gonna get on your ass too. You cannot say point blank, I did not say that if you in fact don't remember. So you very well could have said that. And as we see things going, you definitely did say that. Isn't it crazy? How throughout this, Jonathan's justification of things not being flirty between him and Ellie is that Ellie is just not his type. He's not interested in her on the outside. Things will not happen. Is that true? Are you sure? She's looking very much my type in these photos. Mm. Anyways, the honesty box comes out. We have Sarah who admits to having regrets about her conduct in the experiment. Tim says that he believes she is over her ex and he can see himself falling in love with her. That's great. I don't believe it, but that's great, you know? Then we have Tori. She says that she's infatuated with Jack and can see herself falling in love with him. For the record, she has never been in love before. And I hear that. I realize today, Tori and I are the same age. So are Jaden and Eden. This, these are my peers, y'all. It's ghetto out here. It's, it's so ghetto for me because I'm here judging these people, but I'm not married either. Let's move on. This is not about me. Okay, so she's never been in love. I feel you, girl. Um, he says that he is not in love with her. However, now that their sex life is on track and he claims that they are aligned in that way, I don't think that's true. We remember Jack saying all these super, you know, freaky activities that he's into and it seemed like Tori wasn't on that same page so I think at the very base level they might be aligned but if they had a true sexual chemistry I think there'd have to be a learning curve there that's all I'm saying um maybe she's willing to you know get into what he's into but to say that their sex life is already aligned I don't know that I agree with that anyways he goes on to say that he could be falling in love with Tori so he doesn't know if he is or he doesn't want to say that he is because he's probably not. Moving on. Jade and Ridge started off great. And then things took a turn. I was 
not expecting to fall for someone so quick. Hey. Stop sorry. doing that! Sorry. I'm not going to say nice right, things sorry, if sorry, you sorry. do that. All right, sorry, 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 sorry. I need someone really mature. Like, I need you to step things up. I need you to show me that you're not a little kid. I, I, hmm, I don't know. I'm a little bit concerned, you guys. Wood Ridge's little frat boyisms irritate me to no end, absolutely. But the way that Jade snapped at him, I was thinking, mm, maybe you're in denial of how much work would require you being in this relationship. And if you feel like you don't want to raise a man, then don't raise a man. Don't be with him. You already have a child to raise. You don't need a second. You really don't. So yeah, that concerned me. It really did. It seemed like the room wasn't really concerned. Neither were the experts in the back. So that's weird. And I, you know what? I'm going to call it out because I've seen it a few times now. Jade has an outburst. No response from the experts. Eden, outburst. No response from the experts. Andrea, outburst. No response from the experts. The only time a woman has had an outburst and the experts responded was Sarah. I don't know why that is, but the way that they let some of these women just skate by with these reactions, and I know we're human, okay? We are human. We have emotions. We get frustrated, but at least acknowledge it, at the very least. Anyways, let's move on because um, in this conversation, Ridge said that he is falling in love with her and his six month timeline has shortened to three months. And he said, absolutely in three months, I will be moving to wherever she lives. So she's very happy about that. And um, the immaturity of his just flew out the window. She was like, well, okay, I'm getting my way. And I think that's gonna be a theme with them. As long as Ridge falls in line, she will ignore all the other stuff. We'll have to wait and see about that one. Lauren and Jonathan's honesty box was nothing short of a verbal accosting. If I didn't know, would you have continued it and it would have been, become something? It wouldn't have ever become something. Would I have continued it? Yes. Am I up to your standards as a potential life partner? Explain. Well, we all know the answer to that. So in that conversation, did I go off at you? How? I, I apologized the next day and you just went went off at me again you're like there's not many messages about me in here are there he's making it lauren's fault what do you need more of from me in this relationship i need more honesty and more loyalty and i feel like i'm not getting it from you how do you feel about me right now i think you're a snake <laughs> sweet do i live up to your expectations in the park no i have no plans to see ellie outside the experiment I don't think I've done anything sinister or malicious. Have you guys noticed that the older men in this process really struggle with accountability? Um, what's his name? What was that man's name? Married to Andrea. Richard, oh, Richard, uh, Timothy. Now, what's his name? Jonathan, he's 40. Like the older guys are really struggling with accountability. Is it because you've already lived life so long? You're, you're thinking to yourself, I know who I am. I am the way that I am. If you can't accept it, then that's your business. Interesting. Interesting. But anyways, he does not want to accept fault at all. He claims that he doesn't get why Lauren is popping off like this. But did y'all hear him say when he goes to these dinner parties, he enjoys watching Lauren pop off on other people. So he had to know that this energy was going to be directed at him if he was doing what he was doing. Because she's popped off at other people for less. <laughs> and she's physically and emotionally involved with you. You are absolutely going to receive this verbal accosting as well. So throughout, of, throughout this whole conversation, he's still like, I don't get the issue. I didn't cross the line. I'm not even attracted to that girl. She's beautiful, but I'm not going to be with her on the outside. Lies. Uh, yeah, Jonathan, what a way to go out. What a way. I never expected it. Also, another thing I didn't expect was Jaden and Aiden. This came out of the blue for me. How do you feel about me right now? Describe your feelings. I love you. Was that the first time he said yeah. that? <laughs> oh my God. I 
I'm in my ear. Oh. <laughs> I just saying, she said it back in my ear. Yeah, I whispered it back in his ear. Oh. It's clear that the last 24 hours have been very beneficial for them. Um, can they be in love? I do think so. I, I wonder if they have ironed out a few other things, um, before this declaration of love, just because, yeah, I feel like with them, there's a lot bubbling under the surface that they refuse to acknowledge. And if you don't acknowledge it now, it's going to make itself prevalent in some way, shape or form. So, hey, whatever. They say they love each other. Uh, the commitment ceremony is Sunday. I, I guess the first part is Sunday. So we'll see who's going to stay together. It looks like Jack wants to run. Yeah, no, duh. <laughs> no, duh. We're not surprised. Um, Lauren and Jonathan, they're not going to be together. That's a fact. Who else is here? Jaden Ridge. I think they're going to commit. Sarah and Tim, that's a toss up for me. Sarah and Tim is the toss up for me. And then Eden and Jaden, if they just said they loved each other, I would assume they're going to commit to each other. So we'll see how that one goes. As always, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.